That worship was amazing, yeah, don't you think? Yeah. Is anyone new here visiting? We want to welcome you for the first time. We have some visitors. Visitors, welcome. Welcome to C3 Langford. Not your first time, I know, but oh, first time in a while. So welcome. Welcome to C3 Langford. So great to see you. Okay. It's a bit emotional up on stage today. <laughs> um, all right. So I want to welcome you. Yes. Okay. So let's start there. I'm going to do our um, giving this morning. And it's not all along the same lines, but sort of, because it's really about our heart attitude that I wanted to bring this morning. And in I think it's Matthew 19, 21, this man goes to Jesus and he's like, what can I do to be perfect? And um, he follows Jesus like, you know, sorry, Jesus is like, you've got to follow the commandments. And he's like, but I do all that. He goes, so what else can I do? Jesus goes, okay, go and sell all your possessions and come and follow me. The man's like, I can't do that. Like, he went away, he's very sorrowful because he had a lot. And I don't know if it's so much I want to focus on how much he had, but on more the heart attitude. So it's not that everybody will be asked, you've got to give up everything you have. But for this man, this is what it took. And he couldn't do it. So there's going to be something in each and every one of your lives that Jesus is going to say, this is what you have put before me. This is what I need you to give up. It could be possessions. It could be completely something else that you put in your heart that goes before Jesus. And he asks you to sacrifice and give that up. For this man, it was possessions. Then you get the widow that comes along and she just gives what she has, which is not very much. But what she has and she gives that. And that's the heart attitude. So it's not actually what you give. We give, we talk about giving tithe and 10% as a, a guideline and as a boundary, like a, a guideline, not a boundary, a guideline of what you can do. When you don't know how or what to do, God, I want to put you first. This is how you can put me first. This is an example of how you can put him first because he gave his first. Sorry, still emotional up here. Um, <laughs> because he gave his first. But this is between you and God. He could go, you know what, I want you to give it all. Just say, not saying. He's going to say that. I'm just saying. He could say, I want you to give it all. So we go, okay, it comes out of my bank account or I put it in my hand, put it in the basket. It's 10%. Don't even feel it anymore. Sometimes we can get to that place where it's blase. We just give our tie. We just give our 10%. That's it. We put in our hearts what we're going to give. We give it cheerfully. We put it in. It goes. How much thoughtfulness do we put behind it? How much do we actually go, God, what is it that you want us to give? What is it that you want me to give? Is it my 10%? Is it beyond? What is it that you actually want me to give that is going to take that from my heart that I'm in control and you're in control? So I want to encourage you, whether that's now, whether that's during the week, ask God to position you in what he wants from you. When it comes to your giving, when it comes to your finances, what is it that he's asking you to put First, what is he asking you to put forward? What is he asking you to put in this house? So it speaks about when you actually give this out of your heart, what he's placed that in your heart, that you give thanksgiving to him. What you're giving is giving thanksgiving to him. Yes, it provides everything in the practical, natural way that continues God's work in here and what we're doing, but it's really between you and him that he's going, you know what, this is what I want you to do. And I don't know if sometimes we just know what we're supposed to do and we don't actually go and seek what he wants us to do. So I just want to encourage you during this week to really go, what is it, God, that you want me to give? And what is it that I put myself in control of versus you in control of? So thank you, Father. We just thank you right now, God. We come before you and we just ask to bless every single hand that is given electronically, giving in this morning, giving during the week, however it is that they give into your house and give to you. We thank you, Lord, for their heart. We thank you for the willingness. We ask you to bless that just a hundred times. And in this community, Father, we continue to ask that you to bless this community with just the hands that are in this church, Father, because you can do so much more than we can comprehend with what we can give. That's all yours anyway, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Kids Church, are you guys 
going to kids' church now. We want to wait for the announcements. If you have kids, we have kids leaders and volunteers that would like to spend some time with you and teach you the Bible and dance with you and sing with you. Are we singing, Jess? We dancing? No. Maybe next week <laughs> we can sing and dance. But if you have children, please see Jess at the back and she can let you know what they do. All right, that's a little bit at the end, so I'm going to skip that one. All right, welcome, everybody. Um, Food Hampers, we are doing that fortnightly now, so we did it just Tuesday, just gone, and we are going to do not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. So if you'd like a hamper or know somebody that needs a food hamper, please come and see me. Generations Youth, years 5 to 12, every Friday from 6.30 to 8. For more info, see Jeremy. He's at the back waving his hands. What do we have this week, Jez? Senior citizens. I'm too young to come to that, but senior citizens, you're all welcome to get in. <laughs> that sounds fun. C3L men. The men are getting together for a big brekkie, some fellowship, breakfast. Saturday morning, the 21st, 8.30 to 10.30. Would love you to join and to do what you love to do, which is eat. Yes, eat. So, Elton, put your hand up. If you want more information, come and see this handsome young man down the front. And he will let you know everything you need. <laughs> sound and media. We're looking for people who are keen to help out with sound and words on Sunday morning. Training will be provided. I won't do, use the same um, description for Pete, but Pete, put your hand up. <laughs> this, is, this is handsome Sky's husband. <laughs> but please see Pete if you want to be involved in online and online media. Oh, see, I just set myself up here. <laughs> okay. Carol handsome husband Paul at the back <laughs> he put his hand up and please see him if you would like to be involved in the online Facebook media like all of that sort of stuff and they will give you training provided I just want to brag on someone for five seconds <sighs> see this look at this now I don't know if you can see the detail but I can and there is thousands of tiny tiny little gems that made this and put this together. Danelle made this. It is amazing. She sent it off, got the template, and she has sat and done these little gems and put it together. It must have taken hours and patience. And, and so thank you, Danelle. It is amazing and beautiful. I'm going to hand over to our amazing pasta. Leah's amazing, handsome husband. <laughs> oh, I'm never saying that again. Wow. Morning, everyone. How are you? Now, we've uh, managed to move the spot, Paul, so are we good there? Welcome to everyone if you're on. Are we online? Welcome to everyone online. Welcome to everyone on site. Give yourselves a big hand. Over here. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Oh, look at all this. Deanna, could you do me a favor? Thank you, Chelsea. Can you hold on to that? Oh, I can still kick. Thank you, Charlotte. Oh, thank you, Charlotte, for my drink. Ooh. Anyway, welcome to church. We're going to get straight into God's Word today. Hey, listen, I want to say to people online, there was such a great, there's such a great presence of God during our worship. I want to encourage you. I know it's like you're at home and you're chilling and it's a beautiful day uh, today, that beautiful rain. You know when it's hot and you get that rain? Who loves the smell of sand after it rains? Wow. I love that. There's actually a scientific name for it. It's the oil in the sand that when the rain hits it, it lets off this perfume. Back in the day when I was a young boy, I used to love going out after uh, it rained and actually eat the dirt. Isn't, it hasn't done anything wrong. <laughs> hasn't had any bad effects really, has it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but try it sometime. 
It builds up your immune system, people. Come on. No, 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 don't. I'm not advocating for eating dirt, but you know that, just that smell. But I, it's beautiful. I love the, the wet, the rain and, and stuff like that, especially after a hot day. But hey, listen, I, I was actually saying, if you're on, online, love you to be in this on-site experience because in that space of presence, how we had Pete and that had led us this morning and uh, the team and, and just that feeling of that we can come to God in this space and actually encounter that space of worship. You can do it at home, 100%. But there's something about corporate gathering about with the presence of God. It is phenomenal. So good to have you here at church, folks. Good to see you. High five the person next to you. All right. So last week, thank you, Charlotte, for this amazing drink that you poured for me. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> Nathan, that was an overwhelming clap down the back. Um, so last week we spoke about when, when Jesus Christ comes into our life, we, we come to a, from, from a place of fullness. It's not that he pours a little, 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 little. He gives us everything. And so we're going to just carry on a little bit of that today because I really want you to get this. Uh, and it's not so much that I want you to get, that, get this. It's what Lisa was actually encouraging us. That the words that we're singing to God, like, isn't that amazing that he's literally singing them to us? I want you, I want you, I want you, I want you. Uh, and nothing else will do. And isn't that just amazing about the passionate love that God has for you? And he wants to break that mindset that you're not good enough. He wants to break the mindset. Let me just say this, and it's not advocating that we live a life of sin. Even in the moment that we don't feel worthy enough, he still wants us. Because his work is complete. He's not like he, he's got like, oh, I only did it like 80%. No, no, he did everything. He took all our sin. In spite of our sin, he loved us. When we were sinners, he died for us. And so the love of God for you is intense. It's intentional because he wants to bring you into freedom. And he wants to upgrade our whole mindset on how we see him and how we see life how we see ourselves in him. And he wants us, how does that, how, now how do I think as a result of seeing that? How does my mind think? Because there's a transformation that when we encounter Jesus, there's an upgrade. That's our theme for the month. Do you love the screen? Nobby did the screen for us. Let's give it up for Nob. It is a good screen. So we spoke last week about when we come into relationship with Jesus Christ, he fills us. Now, I've only filled it three quarters because I'll, no, I'll make a mess bumping it. But that's full. And he usually does it to the place of overflowing. Because he's not a God just of enough or just barely or just getting to the top or I'm, worrying, uh, I'm worried about spilling it over. No, he's a God of more than enough because he knows that around you there are people uh, and around you there are circumstances that he wants his life to flow out. Over your life, over the boundaries of your life, over the limitations of your, our lives and so that he can touch other lives. So upgrade is about to happen. High five your neighbor and go there. Upgrade. Upgrade. Upgrade your thinking. Upgrade your seeing. Upgrade your vision. Upgrade your speaking. That's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. So in him, our circumstances are not the issue. That was our first week, remember? Our circumstances are not the issue. It's the perspective of our circumstances that is. Because we're all. if I was to ask for a show of hands, uh, and for those online, put it in the comments, of anyone that's facing a trial, an issue, a circumstance right now, if that is who you are, you don't have to do that, sorry, because not, not everyone's. But if you're facing something right now and it's overwhelming, if you've got courage to put your hand up. So I'm putting mine. Yep. All right, there's several of us. I want to say to you people, you are the luckiest people on the planet, people. You should be like jumping for joy, out like just running around. Uh, PC, I think you've been doing something not right because you don't sound like you're right in your mind. But when we see it from God's perspective, um, we're going to see a lot different. Okay, let me just, that's the side. That's us. That's what we're facing. What are we facing in our personal world? What are we facing in our mindset? What are we facing, whether it's a sickness or a, a challenge or, or a, a, an opposition, whatever that is. But then what happens when we come into a situation when we're facing a God possibility, whether it's praying for someone that's got healing or praying for someone that's been um, uh, under the possession of the enemy. 
because I know there's all Halloween and this weekend and everyone's sort of getting into that whole thing. But hey, listen, the spirit realm is so real. And, and, and you know what? God has made us his ambassadors, uh, not to entertain it as much, but to actually to, to declare the, the manifold or the many sides of God, the manifold wisdom of God. And so we have this authority that is given to us. So what do we do in that situation? When I'm faced with a situation that's bigger than my thinking about my faith or what I know about Christ, how do I deal with that? Because Christ has given me everything that I have. So there's my problems, and then there's the things that God wants to actually cause our lives to make a difference in. So when you're facing a situation, whether it's your insecurity or whether it's uh, healing for a, a specific disease or a diagnosis of a, a disease that you're coming against, or whether it's a spiritual opposition that's controlling your mindset and controlling how you do life and controlling people's lives, how do we face that? And church, I believe that God is actually wanting to enlarge our mindset and how we view Him and view those circumstances from a God perspective. So you good? I've spoken to this like a fire hydrant. I need to high five somebody. Don't fall asleep just yet. We're going to go there. All right. I just want to catch a couple of these scriptures that we read last week. It's a few scriptures and then we're going to get into some stories. All right. I had a phone. Deanna, can you be my assistant for a second? Leave those balls. And there's a little phone here. Can you set it up on that table for me? You know, because I can't bend. I'm going to miss, let me just say, I'm going to miss the love and the care that I've been getting from my family about my knee. Oh, no, Dad, you rest. You sit down. Huh? It's coming to an end. But I'm so grateful that my knee... Thank you, Deanna. Can you see if anyone's online? Do you know how to use this? All right. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that online. I hope you said the phone's pretty old, not Clint. Okay, yeah. So this was back in the day when we were young people, young people. We used to use this phone. And sometimes we had longer lines. See, so you couldn't just go in your room and play on your phone. This was one phone in the house. So then when you wanted to talk, when I wanted to talk to Leah, all my business was on the phone, like, in, you know, because the phone's usually in the central place of the kitchen or somewhere close to that. So everyone could use. So you used to try and stretch the line as much as you could to get around the corner. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. And you know, now you can just sort of, in my situation, Leah, oh, Leah, are you there? No, I'm just joking. And it, and it was a dial, you had to dial it that way. So imagine trying to dial someone. Right now we just go to our recents, we press on it and we get the call. Hasn't life changed a lot? But anyway, so I've got our drink, our balls in the second, and our phone. It'll all make sense in a few minutes' time. Uh, Colossians 2, 9 and 10 says, For in him Christ, for in him Christ, it's talking about, all the fullness of the deity dwell in bodily form. Okay? Do we get that? So in Christ, the whole of the Godhead dwells. We good? So that's uh, Colossians 2, 9 and 10. Did I give you another one before that? Sorry. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. And then it says that, in him, you have been made complete. Okay, two sides to that right now. Are we getting this? For in him, the fullness of the Godhead dwells, in Jesus Christ. All right? And then it says where you're positioned and where I'm positioned, it's in him, in Jesus Christ. So in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead. We got that? Yep. Yeah. Nod your head, shake your head. Don't. Yeah, good. Help me out, help me out. My knee, my knee. Um, but and then it says, in him, in Jesus Christ, you have been made complete. Okay, I'm wanting to build a case through God's word for you today to see that how full that you really are. Because when it comes to our circumstances, they'll, it'll change our perspective. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are glorious. So in him, you have been made complete. Listen to this. And he is the head. Jesus being the head over all. Over every power and authority. Listen to that. So every power. So God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, all in one. And we're in that party as well. We're in Jesus Christ. Because that's what he's trying to let us know. Listen, you're invited into that level of relationship. 
You're invited. You're not excluded from that level of relationship. You're not excluded from the Godhead. In fact, you're invited to be in. And when Jesus Christ gave his life for you and, in, you, invited, and you were invited into that relationship, guess where he put you? He put you into that relationship. That's amazing news for each and every one of us. See where you're positioned in Christ. And he says that over every rule or authority or every, every power, this is who Jesus is. So I'm positioned in him over this stuff. See, because the enemy wants to tell you that, no, where your position is actually under this stuff. But your position in Christ over every power and, and authority. So every power and every authority, every rule, every delegated influence, that's what authority is, every jurisdiction, everything that limits, every power, every strength. So we'll end the service right there because I think if we all got that, that would be just revolutionary in our lives. It would revolutionize the way that I see myself because we're trying to have a... Uh, when insecurity comes and tells me I'm not good enough and when fear comes and intimidates me and anxiety comes to talk to me that you're useless and, and whatever else and that you should be really stressing about this situation... And I have nothing to go back at it. Guess what happens? I actually, I'm overwhelmed by that. I'm controlled by that. I'm dictated to by that. And so then I live my life according to that. And then I begin to pray to God about my problem. Show me the blue ball, D. Oh, yes. So this is the problem because this is what it does to us. It just puts, pulls the energy out of us. It pulls the air out of us. It deflates us. It depresses us. And it puts us under its feet when my anxiety comes, when my fear comes, when my insecurity comes, whatever that is. I'm not here to just do the label. But when I'm praying for something and God doesn't do it, then I feel like, God, you're not strong enough. And I feel like this is it. Then I'm actually deflated. Good throw. Hold on to that. We'll leave it there. But Jesus is trying to combat that thought by his word today so that you would change the way you think. Where are you positioned? Well, in Jesus is the fullness of the deity. And I'm positioned in Christ, head over all authority, because he's the one, he's over all authority. Church, I want to tell you that this is where God's saying, I'm raising up a prophetic people. You're not going to be limited just by your circumstance. When I understand my authority in Jesus Christ, I'm going to step into some boundaries in some places that are beyond my pay grade, beyond my experience, beyond my knowledge, beyond my understanding. But it's in the presence of God. It's in the power of God. Why? Because I'm in him. And when I step into that place of authority, I'm not doing it on my own. That's what faith is. My faith is that, listen, when, I, when God's asked me to do something, I'm not doing it on my own. I've got the whole of the Godhead body with me because I'm in that relationship. So I can step into this situation not alone, not feeling abandoned, not feeling like, oh my gosh, it's too overwhelming for me. Changing our mindset, that's what repentance is. That's what being renewed in our mind. That's what Romans 12 too says. Be transformed or be renewed in your mind. Be renewed in how you see yourself. Be renewed, not just in, in, in like hype or just in like, let me just encourage you, motivational. No, no, this is the word of God. This is what Jesus Christ has given each and every one of us. So the Godhead, we're in that, and he's overall. How does our prayer look now? How does our life look like, like now? What do I do right now in that? All right, let's move on. How are we doing for time? We're doing great. All right, let me just give you the scriptures, then we'll give, go into the illustrations. And this is what I love about God. So God is not logical. If you're writing notes, put that down. And he's not rational. He isn't. Because he tells you to believe in something that you can't see. That's not logical. And the things that God calls us to is not rational in our mindset. Because, and that's the thing is we try to live our lives in our logical and rational mindset and it's not the mind of Christ. The Bible says that we actually have the mind of Christ. Why? Because we're in that space. And so I just, I'm, I'm not saying too much, but I'm just repeating a lot because I really feel that the Holy Spirit wants to unlock something in you 
that's going to cause problems and circumstances to look totally different from today onward. And so he says, listen, you need to know my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts higher than your thoughts. So he's, he's, the thing is not, hey, Clint, just, you know, you need to sort of just change the way you think. No, he says, Clint, there's a total upgrade on the way you think. Not based on your ability to think differently, but based on what I say and what I do and where you're positioned in me. So how I see, how I speak, how I think is going to shift because of the word of God, not because of my intellect or my understanding. We get that? So he's saying my ways are higher. And he's not a rational God. He's not a log logical God. He's above that. He's beyond that. He's not even intellectual. He's actually beyond that. Because sometimes we think that if we're intellectual enough and use bigger wo big enough words, then somehow we're so much more mature in God. But the reality of the simplicity of this message today is it's going to be so simple. That's why I've got all these illustrations for each and every one of us. Because he's actually going to go, oh my gosh, now I see it differently. And so the spirit man is being connected. And this is what God is. When I talk about the fullness of God, it's that your spirit man's connected to him. And so now his spirit can, is sort of connected to us and begins to upgrade or download into our, into our lives the upgrade of who God says we are. But then our flesh will get in the way, our mindset will get in the way, our experience will get in the way, our history will get in the way, and all justified to, to, for several reasons. But God is saying, no, listen, I need you to actually see it from my perspective. I need you to speak it from my perspective because I've actually given you everything you need. All right, let's read, read a couple of scriptures and then we're going to do illustrations and then we're going to end. 2 Peter 1, 3. Is it up there? I should put my glasses on. I'm going to try and read it from the Passion. I can only see long distance. I don't need them. All some people debate. Everything we could ever need... So 2 Peter 1 verse 3, everything we could ever need for life. Are you with me? Okay, so just say, when I stop, just go, amen, okay? All right, so everything we could ever need for life and complete devotion to God has already been deposited in us by His divine power. Bingo. So this is everything we could ever need for life and, and complete devotion to God has already been deposited in our lives. You're not half full. You're not half empty. You're full. Okay? And then it goes on. Um, for, all, for all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing Him who has called us, sorry, of knowing Him Amen. who has called us by name and has invited us to come to him Amen. through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. Amen. Nothing we deserved would get us into that space in him. But he said, listen, I lavish this on you. Everything for life and for godliness has been deposited in your life. What? It's like having a bank account and you have zero dollars and then you get a trillion dollars. When you go the next time, there's a trillion dollars in your bank account. Everything that you're going to need possibly to buy for the rest of your life is more, more than provided for. You've got more than enough. And no, normally what happens is once you've bought your 10 houses, 10 cars and gone around the world, well, not so much in COVID, uh, but what you've done all of that, then you'll start giving it off to other people. It's, a, it's the same picture of what God has for us. So when it comes to the circumstances of our lives that we're facing, we need to actually have a different perspective of what God's wanting to do. Turn to your neighbor, give him a high five and go, wake up. Ah. I'm praying that you, I'm, the reason I'm getting you to interact with me because I'm hoping that you start to hear this, church. It's going to change us. It's going to transform us. It's literally going to give us an upgrade. Ephesians 1.3. So everything for life and godliness deposited in us. Yeah, we got that. God lavished on us because of his goodness. And then Ephesians 1, 3 says that every spiritual blessing, every, not some, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us. I like that word lavished. Has been lavished upon us as a love gift 
from our wonderful Heavenly Father. Every spiritual blessing. Thank you. Who said amen? Good on you, Shelley. That should be a resounding amen, like yes. Everything for life and godliness and every spiritual blessing has been deposited on our lives. You are glorious. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are glorious. No, no, I don't know you're like, you're glorious. Like, you're glorious. Like, man, you've got everything of God on the inside of you. Now turn to them and go, you're glorious. <laughs> All right. John 1, 12, last one. John 1, 12 says this in the Passion, but those who embraced him and took a hold of his name were given authority to become children of God. My prayer that for a majority that I see here on site today and for those that are online, I want to encourage you that everything that God has given you is already being given to you. But listen to this. But those who embraced him and took a hold of his name were given authority to become children of God. You are a child of God. I know in our mindset we feel that, you know what, uh, you know, Pastor Clean, yeah, that's great because we're so familiar. It's a bit like white noise. But the revelation that I'm praying that the Word of God would begin to uh, seep in and invade your mind and your heart. I don't want you just to get the concept today. It might, let's, let's say, you might start by just getting the concept today. But there's going to be a work that the Holy Spirit is going to start to do this week that's going to bring that to revelation in you. So that when I'm facing whatever I'm facing, I know I'm not alone in it. I know His ways are higher than my, my ways and His thoughts higher than my thoughts. So that if it's the thing that I'm facing, He's got a plan. He's got something to do with it. And that I can actually walk in this with the boldness that is with me. And everything that I need for life and for godliness has been given to me. So now rather than looking outwardly for some sort of help or, or counsel and that, not that that's wrong, I begin to go internally, not into myself, but into God because He's already given that stuff to me. And so God is wanting us to do that. Understand that with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things have become possible. That's Matthew 10, 27, if you're wanting to your notes. I encourage you to write scripture down. Because here's the thing. This is lovingly. We become really lazy. I, I've become really lazy. Because I can hear a message and I can hear a scripture and I can hear lots of verses. And I can walk out of this door... In fact, you've probably forgotten the first verse that I said earlier. And it's just gone. But God wants us to meditate on his word. That's what transformed. My ability to speak and entertain you for 35 minutes. Listen, I'm not that good. The transformation that God's word brings is what's made. That's what really the change happens. So I can say all these nice things and you go, oh, that was a great message. No, no, no. Stop being lazy. Let's get up off our out mm -hmm. and let's go into God and actually press into it. God, your word says this about me, so I'm going to begin to just meditate on this verse. Everything for life and godliness is given. Let's just start the conversation. How does that look in my marriage? How does that look in my ministry? How does that look in my work? How does that look as my parent in my relationships? Well, how does that look, God? Because I want to know. See, that's how we begin to start to, to meditate and take God's word and bringing it into our lives. So God, my boss is really on my case about this. So how do I actually deal with this situation? Well, God, there's this diagnosis of my thing that I'm going through and, and it's overwhelming me, God. So, but this is the word, every, you've given me everything. So God, now what does this mean with you and me? I want to move you away from just going, I love church, like it's amazing. I got, oh, I got to go to church i got to get my fix, and then I go and do life. No, no, the Word of God is alive and it's powerful. It can renew the way you think. All right, I need to finish. Last scripture. Since you have, Colossians 3, 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Since then you have been raised with Christ. 
Okay, let's go to the amen thing again, okay? Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Amen. Set your hearts on things above amen. where Christ is. Amen. Seated at the right hand of God, the place of God's authority. Amen. So we're in that space, but we're at the place of God's authority. Listen to that. Set your minds. Now, Jesus doesn't do this. It's our responsibility. It says, set your minds on things above. Come on, where's your mind when you're facing a problem? Where's your mind go when there's a situation that's just too big? Where does it go? And God's encouragement to us is, no, 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 don't set it on that, set it on this. Our default as people is to go to, the, to whatever, deal with it, talk to someone, do all of that. Not that I'm saying any of that's wrong, but our first point of call is to set your mind on Him. God, what is you saying about this? All right, we good? Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died. Turn to your neighbor, you look dead. <laughs> Tell you, you're glory, but you're dead. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Are you getting where you're positioned? My life is now hidden with Christ in God. So I'm facing an issue. We just pretend there were nine numbers or six numbers or whatever numbers I need. Hey, Bob, how are you going? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, nah. How's life going? Oh, great. Yeah, nah. Watch, yeah, watch the Eagles. Yeah, they didn't make it this year. That oh, sucked. Oh, the blood is low cup. Let's not mention that. Let's not talk about that. Hey, listen, I want you to know, um, guess what happened to me today? Yeah, I've got a problem. Came this morning. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. Like, really excited. Really stoked about it. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just, it's going to be amazing. I'm just hoping, you know, yeah, it's, it's a fairly big one. Like, you're not knowing who I am. I, I would have been just really stressed by this. I would have been really overwhelmed by this. No, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, no, because I really, I really see that, that where I'm positioning God, yeah, I'm going to be okay in this. I'm hoping this problem actually, you know, holds out for a little while. You know, I hope, I hope that, yeah, no, I hope it stays around for two or three months. Yeah, no, no, I'm not praying for it to go straight away. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, anyway, not enough about me. How are you doing? Oh, you got no problem. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. You know God, He's faithful. You know, I'm sure you'll, there'll be one right around the corner. <laughs> yeah, hang in there, hang in there. It'll come, it'll come. All right, man. Hey, bless you, Bray. Bye. The change of mindset, <laughs> the change of mindset is not just out of willpower. Because, see, with every problem, and this is really what I want us to talk about, that if my life is now hid in Christ, with every problem that I face, all right, Dean, let's get ready with these balls. This is a problem that I'm faced with. How I view this problem can either overwhelm me, can just sit on my head. I had to get a flat ball because I've got a, like a weird shaped head. So it can actually sit on my head and dictate to me how I should feel and how I should act and how I should do. And, it, and I can't get past it. And that's all we see. Some people have taken a photo. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and you know what? This it determines our life. And it actually, everything that I do, everything that I, this adjusts with me. And it's a bit like that phone call. When I begin to view it from a different perspective, that's the promise. That's the, that's the problem. Okay, the Bible. Let's go. Let's leave that there. I thought you were going to throw it to me because I was going to show you how good I am still on one knee. With ev you look at Scripture. With every problem in Scripture, there's a promise. God brings a promise. 
So that's why when I'm on my phone to my friend, I can actually go, man, I am so thrilled that I've actually got a problem. Normally what we do is that when we've got a problem, we want to tell the world what our problem is. And we want to talk about it and talk about it and rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it. So that the problem actually becomes bigger than the promise. And when the problem is too big for the promise and then God becomes so small, my faith can't trust a God and can't believe in a God that's not able to answer my, my issue or deal with my issue. So my problem still exists. But when I begin to go, God, your word, <laughs> your word is now what I'm actually going to use to address. Your promise. Your promise. Didn't change. Ten days. Your promise. Didn't change. Eleven days. Twenty days. Three months. Your promise. Because what I'm doing is I'm saying, no, you're not going to just talk to me and let me be determined how I live and how I perceive God and how I see that person and how I live. I'm actually going to take God's word and use that as the thing that... I'm taking you off the throne of my mind and actually causing now you to be under my feet because that's where we are, that's who we are, and that's the authority that we have as children of God so that now the promise becomes the thing that guides my mind. Yeah, yeah, we get that? So that is why when we ha whenever we face a problem, understand that there's a promise attached to it. So it could be the very thing that you're facing right now, an opportunity for God to bring his promise into that situation. Yes, the answer is yes to that question. It really is. But I can't see it if I'm going to just, if I'm not going to surrender my mind to the authority and to the will of God, this will rule. But if I surrender that to the will of God, this rules. Big ball. This is, Emily, you can come up. I can tell you this. <laughs> Let me know when you take it. <laughs> One, two, three. Ah, it's a bit of this concave thing that I've got going on here. Here's the thing. With every problem... There's a promise. And there's God's provision. God's provision. God's provision. I need someone to hear that today. God's provision. So I'm going to walk with my problem. He's not going to determine my life anymore. God's promises, because I know attached to His promise is His provision. So I can walk through the promise, day 10, day 20, day year one, year two, year three, because of the promise of God, there's provision for it. He comes with all of that. If you look literally, and, and Lisa highlighted Ezekiel, the problem was the valley of dry bones. But with that was a promise. And God gets him to speak the word to that situation. And then God breathes on it. He breathes onto it. He breathes life into dead things. They just formed. They were just standing there. They were just formed pieces of bones and flesh, but with no life in it. And I want you to know today that the provision of God is about to transform the way you look at your situation. The promise of God is going to transform the way you look at your situation. Because where are you positioned? You're positioned in God. Pete, why don't you come on up? So your spirit is designed to carry more than you can hold. I'm telling you, your spirit is designed to carry more than you can hold. More of God. More of His presence. Oh, is my ball, my ball person gone? Jez. So you design to carry more than you can hold. And that's why, so even in the circumstance, you can still overflow. Oops, sorry, Paul. You can still overflow. You can still overflow. I want you to bow your head wherever you are right now. 
come on. Just take a perspective look from heaven. All the fullness of God is in you. The Holy Spirit who searches the deep things of God wants to reveal God's thoughts to you. I want you to realize how amazing you are. Come on, I want you to close your eyes and just hear these words. How brilliant you are in Christ. See yourself from the standpoint of majesty. From His supremacy, supreme God. The God who has conquered everything. came to bring heaven to earth and he's teaching us how to now be citizens of heaven as it is in heaven let it be here on earth as it is in heaven God let it be how I see how I think how I speak how I live Spirit of the living God, I thank you for every heart, for every person sitting here under the sound of my voice, that today there's going to be a transformation or the beginning or the the working towards there being a, a complete transforming way of looking and thinking and seeing life and problems and situations, impossible circumstances. The power of the living God, the majesty of God and the Godhead, we are positioned with them And everything of God has been put and placed in the inside of us. Wow. We are glorious, God, beyond our understanding. We are filled with such power and authority and anointing. And we have listened and learned to live with um, lack and, and limited and not to the fullness of who we are. But Lord, you're removing every blockage and you're removing every part of what our lives are and you're beginning to reveal who we really are and I thank you for that and I bless you for that and I thank you Father God for the Spirit of God that would become would come on every heart every mind every and take the things of God that you have searched out and would you make them revelation to us would you reveal that to us would the authority of God be not only something that we know and give a mental assent to but I pray that the authority of God would be manifested in our lives in the circumstances that we face in the oppositions that we have in the extraordinary situations God let them manifest manifestation of the authority of God and then in our everyday life that Lord God our relationships our people our husbands our wives our workplaces whatever we do you have given us everything in those situations so we want to thank you for that in Jesus precious name why don't you stand to your feet and we'll close guys thank you so much I've gone way too long come on let's just though for those people who've never given your heart to Christ today's that opportunity we're going to say a prayer and all I want you to do is I want everyone in the auditorium just to place your hand on your heart come on we're going to just reaffirm our commitment to God and in the understanding of who we are Heavenly Father pray this with me today I give my life to you in exchange for yours thank you for taking my sin for your in exchange for your forgiveness Thank you for taking my sickness in exchange for your healing. Today I receive your life. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I receive the Holy Spirit. And today I choose to live my life as a follower of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're going to say goodbye to those online. But if you need prayer for anything, we're going to open up this thing, but we're going to dismiss the service as well. God bless you guys. Let's go hard for God. Amen.